This episode of Storytellers is brought to you by these fine companies. I'm Billy Meyer, and you're watching Storytellers on Competition Plus TV. And I was driving for Keelan Clayton and, and Pluger. And so I'm out there to get fitted in the car, and it's a points race in Irwindale. And, and I go to the race. I'm in town in a rent car. And uh, 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 Richard Conklin, who was Steve Pluger's partner at the time, they're there at the races, and they're watching. And so we're there, and, and so we're, we're there, and we're partying pretty good and, and uh, we get I get relieved and and I and I'm driving Pluger and Conklin Conklin's in the back seat and, and we're pulling out and, and this, they're getting ready for the final round I guess at pro stock and these guys are I don't know who it is at the time they're pushing this pro stock car to me so I stop and they and they don't I mean they don't go around me and so I back up and I'm continuing to back up, and they don't just go around. I mean, easily, you know, just turn at the wheel five degrees and finish. So finally, I just stopped, you know. And uh, they pushed the car right into my car and break the front bumper up. And, the, and they go ballistic, obviously. And of course, there's about seven crew guys. And, and they, they start beating, I mean, they're trying to get us out of the car. And uh, finally, one of the guys takes a jack handle, you know, off a jack, and he, and he beats the back wind out, and glasses all over Richard Conklin. And, and he had had a little too much alcohol, so he was didn't really bother him that bad, you know, in a sense. And, and so now I know things are getting dangerous. You know, it's it's kind of like a, some of these <laughs> riots you see these days. So I, I back up. And I end up in the staging lanes. And I run down there, and as you know, I know how to spin a car out. I can spin a funny car out. I can damn sure spin a rent car out because you use an emergency brake. And I see this guy running at me, so I floor it right at him. And, and, and he jumps over the fence. And I thought it was one of them. Well, it ends up being the assistant district attorney in Pasadena. Breaks his arm. That didn't go, that was not good. Uh, and so then we end up at the back of the we end up hauling ass and get into the back of the pits and jump out of our cars and, and get a ride with uh, Russell, Russell Long. Russell, Russell Long. Okay. Yeah, so, so he, he, gets a, he, he drives us out of there. He gets us out of there, and they, they don't know that he pulls out. We leave the car there, and, and of course, it's got windows beat out of it. And it's, so the next day, and Steve uh, was uh, in charge of the racetrack, Next day I go pick up the car and it's tore up. And I, I go to the airport, and back then the LAX airport, and you just pull in line to herd steel and park the car and put the TIG in and leave. Well, I just put it in line and left. And of course they called me by the time I got home and said, yeah, somebody tore up the car. I don't know, you know, got insurance. So anyway, so they want to have this, this uh, driver's commission meeting uh, to take my license away. And so division seven. Right, and so we, I fly out there, and it's the day, it's gonna be the day before uh, the SEMA show. So I fly out there on Delta, and I used to carry a gun with me uh, on, everywhere I went. It was a, a five shot, 38, aluminum, uh, lightweight, with a shoulder holster, because we always carried so much money, you know, match racing. So I fly out there, and, and, and Steve Pluger, and, they're going to go with me to be witnesses at this hearing. Over, and the hearing was at Pomona Racetrack up on the top floor of the tower. And, and they were getting threats from all these guys to not be witnesses. And, and so I go pick up Pluger and I went, hey, my luggage didn't get here today, so I don't have a gun. He goes, well, I got one. So he grabs his shotgun from behind his door in his office at SNR Race Cars. Throw it in the front seat. Uh, we go to this meeting, nothing happens, you know, it's just a typical threat deal. 
they did take my license away for, at the time. Uh, but the rules on taking your license away are really interesting. So the way NHRA back, this is in 76. If they take, if a division takes your license away, they actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, they take it away, it's their opinion to take it away and they send it to your division for a final vote. Uh, you know, so you're, so it's like Congress passing something and it's still got to get approved by the Senate, you know, type deal. So. Uh, I go back, drop the guys off that night, and, and I'm staying at the Marriott, the Century, on the Marriott Hotel on Century Boulevard. Got the big awning out front. I pull up there in my rent car, go check in. It's about midnight. I'm leaving at six in the morning, but on the way there, I went back. I went to the airport and got my luggage. Okay, so now I got my luggage, which has my gun in, in my luggage. And I, I, I go check in, and I'm checking in, and, and uh, the, the bellman, and nicely dressed, and he comes in and he says, Mister, he says, uh, you, you need to get this gun out of the front seat of your car. I went, oh, shit, Pluger forgot to take it out when I dropped him off. So I go out there, whip this shotgun out underneath this big awning, open up, see, it's not loaded, no big deal. Put it in the trunk, see you later. Valet's my car. I go check in, go to bed, like three in the morning, beating on my, knocking on my door. <laughs> Mr. Meyer opened the door, it's general manager. I wake up, of course back then I sleeping in my birthday suit. Uh, hey, if my credit card's no good, I'll pay you cash in the morning, I, I need some sleep. Bam, 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 open up the door. So finally I open up the door. When I opened up, when I clicked that turn knob, all hell broke loose. They came flashing in there. They had me on the ground tackled. And there's six uh, cops or FBI or whatever you want to call it. I'm handcuffed. Of course, I'm naked. So, the, so, so they decided not to handcuff me. Let me put my clothes on. And then they handcuff me. They go through my stuff. And they see I have all these speeding tickets I hadn't paid. And uh, and so they arrest me for that, like six speeding tickets. And, and uh, so I go to jail, Manhattan. Not not where you want to go, by the way. Uh, so I'm there about three hours, and uh, they come going to let me out. And, and I get what I what they what I looked out was I convinced them that of all the speeding tickets they said were mine, they weren't mine because I had multiple driver's licenses that they didn't. I had California driver's license and Texas California. I had five driver's licenses actually back then because it wasn't computerized. Well, so they didn't, they didn't know. So I, I convinced them I only was the Texas guy, not the guy on Reseda Boulevard where I had to live. So it was, it was $281 to get out. And, and uh, I had $300 in 20s. And hand him $300, and the guy goes, we don't give change, boy. I said, this is in the bank. I said, well, I need the change so I can get a cab to get back. We don't give it. Well, I had a liar's poker dollar. I don't know how many of y'all play liar's poker, but I had a liar's poker dollar in my back pocket. It had seven sixes on it, which you never seen probably ever again in your life. And I used to win a lot of liar's poker games with seven sixes. So I had to give up the damn liar's poker dollar with, with $280 to keep the 20 so I could get the cab to get back to the hotel. So I go back to the hotel and I, I go to the front counter. I said, hey, I, I need to get my gun back. You know, and they said, well, you need to go downstairs and see them. I go downstairs and there's these computers down there and there's these people down there and the secret service is down there. And, and I start talking to this guy and he goes, you act like you don't even know what the hell happened. I said, no, I, I, it was a hell of a night just for having speeding tickets, I can promise you that. <laughs> he goes, here, sit down. He sits down, he goes, so when you pulled in last night and whipped that shotgun out of that car, he goes, you don't even know how close you were. So what do you mean? He goes, well, Betty Ford, this is two weeks before the presidential election, Gerald Ford, checked in 15 minutes before you did on campaign 
campaign. I said, that's all Secret Service guys standing out there. I said, why didn't you do something then? He goes, you weren't going anywhere, trust me. He goes, we had your floor blocked off. You couldn't have let, you couldn't have, you, you were followed from the minute you got out of that car. And so, uh, I said, well, I've got the shotgun back, but they never gave me my pistol back. But it was such a badass pistol, I'm not, I don't know if they'd sent in forensics or one of them ended up with it or what, but it was a 15 ounce, five shot, 38. So yeah, so there's that story. So to finish the story, we come, I come back to what that's in November, October, November, SEMA show. They decide, they send, they send the request for me to lose my license, my funny car license. And, and uh, so Dale Ham was our division four director at the time. So he calls this meeting together. And so on like January 1st, um, and, and it's up in North Dallas at one of the big hotels. And, and so back then, the, the driver's commission what was Richard Tharp, Raymond Beadle, Chip Woodall, and Dave Settles. Right? So we go to lunch. <laughs> Let me repeat that. Chip Woodall, Richard Tharp, Dave Settles, and Raymond Beadle. So, which I think you've realized maybe here that the, all those are my closest friends in this earlier conversation and that we've talked about. So we sit down and, and Dale said, you know, this is serious stuff. And uh, so Richard Tharp stops him and goes, right, wait a minute, before we start, I want to know, are you going to buy lunch and all the cocktails? <laughs> and I went, hell yeah, I am. He goes, all right, he's innocent. <laughs> and, and Dale goes, absolutely blissing. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't just, it's not a game. You can't do that. He goes, he wasn't on a racetrack. He didn't do anything. I mean, you can't get a guy in trouble. He goes, we've got to do something. So Raymond, obviously being the con artist, Canadian guy that he was, he goes, when did this happen? So it was like July 1st. I said, okay. We're going to suspend your license for six months. Retroactive to the day you did it. You get your license back tomorrow. <laughs> and Dale was, Dale was so mad. Uh, I bought lunch and cocktails. <laughs> we went on our merry way. Uh, I'm Billy Meyer. And you're not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm Billy Meyer, and you're watching the. Something I don't remember what it is. <laughs> Storyteller. You're Billy Meyer. I'm no, Billy. No, I'm not Billy Meyer. You're Billy Meyer. I think I'm Billy Meyer, and, and you're you're watching Storytellers on some channel. I think it's it's Competition, Competition Plus, Plus TV. TV. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs>